Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. This is Captain Jack and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about Simply Jetpacks. Alright, if you go ahead and open up NEI, you'll see that there are a whole ton of different items added in by this mod. And it's kind of confusing at first if you don't know what you're looking for, but I'm going to break it down for you real quick in this tutorial. As you probably already noticed, this tutorial is two different colors, which is kind of odd, but that's just because this mod is basically compatible with two other mods. If you choose the thermal expansion route, um, as far as power and items go, you can make their jetpacks, or you can make the Ender IO um, chain of jetpacks. They both do the exact same thing, but they just use the different mods components, and I'll be going over them both separately, but quickly. All right, so on this little grid here, I've thrown up all the thermal expansion jetpacks that you can make, starting with top left, leadstone, then followed by hardened, reinforced, and resident. As you go to the right, they gradually get better and better and better. Um, on the next tier down, we have the armored versions of the jetpacks, and uh, the armor plating, which is the next tier, um, can be applied to the normal jetpacks on the top tier. I hope that wasn't very confusing, but you can kind of see how the nice, neat little graphics underneath of the jetpacks tell you which armor plating can be applied to which jetpack. You cannot mix and match them. All right, so I have the recipe open for the easiest jetpack to make, easiest in quotation marks, as these uh, are not actually that easy to make. Um, we see that we're going to need flux capacitors, and the flux capacitors is unique to the thermal expansion line of jetpacks. So uh, for each of the versions of the thermal expansion jetpacks, you're going to need a flux capacitor. And this is basically the energy storage unit inside of your jetpack. Next, you're going to need a leather strap, which is very simple to make, just a couple iron and four leather, followed by some lead ingots. And then you're going to need these two leadstone thrusters, which actually are not very easy to make. You're going to have to have two steam dynamos, along with a pneumatic servo, redstone reception coil, lead ingots and some glass here okay so the thrusters are probably the hardest component to make of uh, of each of these jetpacks and we'll definitely see that in the hardest tier uh, and if you want to apply armor to them simply put it in a crafting grid just like this just like that and it will uh, be armored okay and if you um, shift mouse over these it will actually tell you um, whether it's armored or not that one is not armored and this one is armored there we go okay now it's Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now it's armored. All right. So very good. That's how you apply armor to jetpacks. And uh, you can actually take the armor off. There you go. It popped down into my inventory here. Very good. All right. Next, we have these things called flux packs. And what flux packs do, if you are wearing them, is they will charge up things that I believe are only on your hotbar, like tools and such. Um, in order to make these flux packs, um, in order to make, let's say, the hardest version of the flux pack, which is the resonant flux pack, and these can be armor too, and you will need the armored version to make the um, the highest tier of the thermal expansion jetpack, and we'll get into that in just one minute. Uh, but in order to make this one, you're going to need the tier before it, okay? So in order to make resonant, you're going to need harden or uh, redstone. In order to make redstone, you're going to need harden, and in order to make harden, you're going to need the leadstone version, Okay. These are all wearable, as you can see right here. Um, they have very neat little graphics. You can see the flux pack here. So this is a leadstone flux pack. You kind of wear it just like that, strap it on, yeehaw. Um, we have the leadstone jet pack, which is not armored. And finally, the armored version here, which um, has kind of a little chest plate there. And you can see that as the tiers increase, the armor looks kind of like, um, you know, the graphic that it is in NEI. And uh, there we go. Finally, we have the armored resident jetpack okay so pretty cool graphics um, these ch kind of charge stuff on the go and these will allow you to fly around and finally we'll learn how to make the one that does both all right the most difficult uh, jetpack you can make from the thermal expansion side is this thing called a flux infused jet plate and this thing is awesome it's like flying around faster than creative mode and it has a whole ton of charge but it's extremely difficult to make we are going to have to make a flux infused um, chest plate top middle, two flux infused armor platings, um, two cryothium coolant, unit, coolant units. Um, we're going to need to make a resonant armored jetpack, um, two flux th fluxed thrusters here and here, and finally we're going to need a resonant armored flux pack. Okay, And this jetpack, as you can see here, goes very nicely with the uh, redstone arsenal armor just like this, so it matches. Woohoo! All right, so how do we craft this awesome chest piece? Well, the uh, the most difficult component is probably this fluxed armor plating right here. And uh, if you've used the uh, 
redstone arsenal mod. You probably already know how to make it, but I'll just show you real quick. We're going to have to melt down some redstone into destabilized redstone, and then we're going to throw some electrum blend and combine it and with uh, the destabilized redstone, and we're going to get the stuff called fluxed electrum blend. Once we have the fluxed electrum blend, we're going to combine it with pyrothium dust to make these things called fluxed electrum ingots, and you'll be able to turn these ingots into nuggets. When you're done making your ingots, you're going to need to take a diamond and throw it inside the same fluid transposer and create a flux crystal with the destabilized redstone. Now in order to make the glowstone elevation units need for the thruster, you're going to have to melt a whole bunch of glowstone and then combine one of these glowstone elevation units that are empty and fill it with energized glowstone in order to get this glowstone elevation unit. And you craft the empty shell by using some of these fluxed electrum ingots. Now what are these lumium ingots? Well, lumium's not easy to craft. You're going to need some uh, pulverized tin and some silver and one piece of silver along with a bucket of energized glowstone and it's sort of like the enderium recipe and that's going to give you four lumium. Take your lumium dust, throw it inside of a redstone furnace and it will turn into a lumium ingots. In order to craft the flux armor plating, you are going to have to combine your flux crystal and your flux electrum ingots along with some nuggets and you're going to get the one armor plating. To craft your flux thruster, you're going to need two ingots, one armor plating, one resonant thruster, and two of these glowstone elevation units. And to make the resonant thruster, you're going to need some innervation dynamos, um, enderium ingots, redstone reception coil, electrum gear, and a servo. Okay, so this is a pretty expensive jetpack to make, but it's pretty awesome. Don't worry, I'll show you how it works in just a minute. Alright, so I'm not going to try to belabor the point of this, because these jetpacks are all relatively... Um, the same. I just want to show you that you can use Ender IO just the same as you can use thermal expansion to make all these jetpacks. So here they are on the board here. I've listed them basically in the same uh, same order or tiers as I did the thermal expansion ones. On the top left, we have the conductive iron jetpack, and then we have electrical steel followed by energetic, followed by vibrant, and then we have each of the armored versions along with their armor platings, followed by their thrusters on the bottom. The conductive iron jetpack is basically the worst jetpack in the pack, and then the vibrant jetpack over there is the second best jetpack and we'll learn how to make the best one that Ender IO adds in here in just a second. All right, so here's the first minor difference here. Um, the capacitor packs are um, going to be the same thing as your flux packs. Those will charge stuff on the go. The capacitor packs look like this. There you go. There you go. Very nice. Um, they'll charge stuff on the go and uh, you will need these or you will need this final tier basically to make the last jetpack. Okay, so the Actatic, you just need the one before it. Quadruple layer, double layer, and finally the basic one. And this is all using um, Ender IO materials. So it's it's a really neat um, concept that Simply Jetpacks use is that if you choose to go the Ender IO route um, as far as power um, generation, transportation, so on and so forth, and you have all these materials already, you can just go ahead and make the Ender IO jetpacks. They're really no different. It's just uh, the, the recipes that are different. All right, for Ender IO, their beast mode jetpack is called the Dark Solarium jetpack. And in order to make this, you are going to need quite a bit of things. Um, let's go ahead and pull up the recipe here because I can't remember all the names. Enriched Solarium Alloy, an Ender Crystal. Um, you're going to need the Vibrant Armor Jetpack, two Reinforced Glider Wings, two Dark Solarium Thrusters, and finally an Octatic Capacitor Pack. Now, how do you make it? All right, in order to make enriched solarium alloy, you are going to need dark steel. So grab some obsidian, coal powder, and iron ingot melted inside of an alloy smelter here, and you are going to create dark steel. Next, take some soul sand and gold and combine it together in a alloy smelter to make solarium. In another alloy smelter, take your dark steel, solarium, and some of these pulsating crystals here. And pulsating crystals are made by a diamond and some pulsating iron nuggets. Throw them inside of here, and you are going to make enriched solarium alloy. All right, if you're not sure how to make this thing called an ender crystal here, what you are going to need to do is you are going to need to craft a soul vial, um, and then right-click the soul vial onto an enderman walking around your world, which may be very rare, and you will capture an enderman soul here. Next, combine it inside a soul binder along with a vibrant crystal, 10 experience levels, and you will create this thing called an ender crystal, and they'll even give you your soul vial back. The reinforced glider wings are pretty simple. You'll need two of them. Take three enriched solarium alloys along with some conductive iron armor plating and make yourself two of these. And finally, in order to make the dark solarium thruster, you are going to need two of the enriched solarium alloys, 
um, two octatic capacitors, one vibrant thruster, and this thing called a flight control unit. Now, the flight control unit is um, pretty simple to make, except the fact that you need to find a bat, which is unfortunate. So, go ahead and craft yourself another soul vial, find a bat, right click the bat, trap its soul, put it inside a soul binder, make this thing called a flight control unit, combine it with eight levels of experience, and you are going to get a flight control unit, and you will finally be able to craft this magnificent beast called the Dark Solarium Jet Plate. All right, so now we know how to build them. Let's figure out how to fly then. If you have a jetpack in your hotbar and you right click it, you will automatically go ahead and put it right on. So that's pretty super. Um, next, I just want to point out that I'm using the FTB in, not Infinity. Yes, I'm using FTB Infinity. And unfortunately in this mod pack, the default key bindings for simply jetpacks do not work because they're used by other mods. So we're going to press escape, press options, press controls, press all. Scroll down to simply jetpacks right here and change these two keys to keys that are not bound. You can tell if they're not bound because they'll be in white and keys that are already bound to another key will be in red. Okay, so uh, pick a mod that maybe you don't use and use those key bindings for simply jetpacks and uh, change your switch mode and turn on and off keys there. So I have got G and I have got V. So you can see in the top left hand corner of my screen, I, you see that um, it tells me how much jetpack fuel I have. It tells me if the engine is on or off, green is on, um, red is off, and you can tell if hover mode is on or off. Now before I show you how to actually fly around with these things, I just want to mouse over them really quick to show you what they look like when you do that. Okay, so we have four diff or five different tiers. Uh, Leadstone's tier one for thermal expansion, and we go all the way up to tier five with the flux infused jet plate. Um, tier five is uh, dark solarium for ender IO. Um, it'll tell you how much RF is stored in them. It'll tell you if the engine is on or off. And uh, see how it says hover mode disabled there? It's in red. That doesn't mean it doesn't have hover mode. It just means that it's currently disabled. So that's just how that is. Um, fuel usage, 10 RF per tick. Um, the higher the tier, the more RF per tick that they will use, up to 400 RF per tick. Um, it will tell you if it's armored or not. Um, so this one's not armored. This one is armored. Okay. Um, it will tell you the type of particle that you have applied to the jetpack, and we'll go over that in just one second. And it will tell you that it will allow flight while active and how much protection it gives. And this doesn't actually say that it gives more protection than the armored ones, but I'm pretty sure that it does. All right, so there we go. We've moused over those real quickly. Let's find out how to fly these things. So if I press G, it'll enable enable hover mode or disable it. And if I press um, V, it will turn off my engine. If the engine is off, I can just jump like normal. If the engine's on, boo, I will fly up into the air, okay? Now, this is the crappiest jetpack that's available in uh, from thermal expansion. So it goes up really slow, okay? If I enable hover mode, you can see that it slowly descends. And the graphic is still there, so the jetpack is still working, okay? If I have a higher tier of jetpack, let's say the resident jetpack, you can see that it's provided a little bit of armor. I have hover mode enabled now. I press G. I'm going to fly up in the air because I'm going to turn my engine on. Oh, hold on. This one has no charge. Okay, let's just use a reinforce just for example. Okay, so I'm going to fly up in the air. I'm going to press G for hover mode. And you can see that I still start falling um, much slower than the crappiest version. Okay, and you can toggle these on and off. Um, you can also fly up into the air. Um, you can see that they provide a speed boost too. Pretty solid speed boost. Not bad. Okay, and if you press shift and sneak while in the air, you'll go down pretty slowly. Okay, so G, turn off hover mode, bam, fall down. Um, you will take fall damage if you uh, hit the ground too hard with these things. So make sure you have some rubber boots or some type of enchanted armor on. That will um, basically negate the fall damage. Now, the unique thing about the flux infused jet plate and the dark solarium jet plate is that uh, you see there in cyan on the bottom left of my screen, it says sneak while activating to toggle charger and charges armor and items um, when held. So if I go ahead and take this flux infused jet plate and put it on, um, you can see that I have another option up there, and it's the charger option. And in order to activate the charger option, I'm going to do Shift V again. It all depends on what your key bindings are, okay? So Shift V will um, toggle the charger either on and off. So I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to equip this fluxed infused um, plate here, and then I'm going to turn the charger on. And you'll notice that oh, I guess everyone's going to be checking their phones while they're watching this tutorial. Um, you'll notice that this all is charging up. Okay, so that's one of the unique features of the flux infused jet plate. Now it will take um, charge from the jet plate and charge all your armor. So if you're taking heavy damage and falling and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and the thing is on, you might want to watch out because it might run out of fuel a little bit faster than you're expecting. Okay, so that's how you activate the charger mode. Um, the uh, dark solarium jet plate is, this is the kind of equivalent for Ender IO here. Um, so this these dark leggings here, um, this stuff will all get charged by Dark Solarium Jet Plate, and I'm pretty sure this one will charge it too. 
Um, this is just kind of the equivalent for Ender IO. If you were curious, um, the only other thing that we're going to go over is Shift G, and that will um, either enable or disable emergency hover mode, which I'm not entirely sure what that actually does. Can't figure it out anywhere. There's anywhere. There's really no documentation other than the fact that they actually added it into the game. Um, so that's a thing. Oh yeah, and with this stuff, I'm in, I'm in creative mode right now, uh, but the hover mode for this is basically you do not move, which is awesome, okay? Um, if you know what emergency hover mode does, then put it in the comments, please. Um, what I'm assuming it does is if it thinks you're in danger of dying, it will like stop you from dying if you're falling too fast or something. No idea, not a clue. Um, but that's how you fly and how you move around and how you keybind these. If you have hover mode enabled and you just happen to walk off a cliff, these jetpacks will know it and they will automatically activate hover mode and you will continue going in a straight line just like this, okay? And this one, you don't actually fall, so... Oh, you do fall very slowly, very slowly you do fall. Okay, so that's kind of a little emergency feature. All right, so let's talk about particle customizers really quick. Particle customizers can be applied to any jetpack, and they simply um, change the like flames that come out of the back of it, or the bottom of it. So um, you see I have particles default here, and that's basically just the flames. Um, but if you want to change the particles to, let's say, um, no flames at all, you just put that in there and re-equip the jetpack. It says that particles are none, so when you fly, it will not show anything, just like that. Okay, if you want to change it to um, smoke only, you can change it to smoke only, just like that. Okay, and if you want to change it to rainbow, it will do rainbow particles. Okay, very cool. One extremely wasteful thing that you can do with this mod is that you can actually make zombies or skeletons wear these jetpacks by shift clicking on them, and then they will kind of just like bebop around. Um, since these are the crappiest versions, I think they'll just go until they run out of fuel and then they'll just kind of hang out in them. Um, but if you put like a better version on these, let's say an armored one, poof, blast off. I, they just go like until you can't see them anymore. Okay, and if, let's say I, I give them, oops, let me give them this one. Bam. I'm getting really excited about this. So it's got my little rainbow rainbow thingy on them. Very cool. Goodbye, Mr. Zombie. Last but not least, you can craft this thing called a tuberous jetpack. And this is Chief Diesel status. If you go ahead and put this on or put it on a zombie, it will kind of just fluff out and then boom, fireworks. You will die. So this has been Simply Jetpacks. I have been Captain Jack. I'm wearing a tuberous jetpack. I'm not sure how. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, check us out on all of our social media outlets listed here. And as always, stay poised.